The date was January 1st, 2022. The location, Atlanta, Georgia. The event, the first ever WWE Day 1 pay-per-view. On this day, a butterfly effect would take motion that continues to live on till this very day. One instance that would change the company forever. As the show went on the air, Michael Cole announced that Universal Champion Roman Reigns had tested positive for COVID-19 and would not be wrestling Brock Lesnar in the main event of the show. If you aren't familiar, a butterfly effect suggests that the world is deeply interconnected and that one very simple occurrence can change the course of everything, with everything linking back to if that one event either did or did not happen. And in this case, that event is Roman Reigns getting COVID and the main event never happening. A very simple occurrence at the time, but it shook up the WWE landscape forever. This was the big matchup that this show was sold on. Roman had been holding the Universal Championship for 500 days up until this point, and on screen, the story was that Roman Reigns ditched Paul Heyman because he was a double agent for Brock Lesnar. The key selling point was how Heyman was conflicted and where his allegiance really lied after he told Roman he was protecting him from Brock. All that aside, with Roman out, Lesnar got placed into the Fatal 4-Way WWE title match, making it a 5-Way. A match that, let's not forget, initially was supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one match after Seth Rollins won a championship contract on Raw. So we got to the end of the night at day one, and in the main event, Brock Lesnar ends up pinning the WWE Champion Big E to capture his sixth WWE title. Thing is, he wasn't supposed to win this title. Seth Rollins was supposed to become WWE Champion and enter WrestleMania 38 holding that title, but because Roman got COVID, they changed course and still had Brock Lesnar win a championship. Yes, I said still had Brock Lesnar win a championship because both world titles were supposed to change hands on this night. Seth Rollins, the new WWE Champion, while the Universal Championship was going to go to Lesnar, ending the 500-day reign of Roman Reigns. A championship run that's now crossed well over into the 1,200-day mark, something that wouldn't have been possible had Brock ended it right there. The report also suggests that Heyman would have returned to help Brock because Heyman appeared with Brock the very next Raw, so in turn, would you have babyface Roman Reigns right now? I don't really know. Though the results were pretty simple at the time, this changed the WWE forever because as the months went on, that one announcement, that one positive COVID test continued to change the company. The plan headed into WrestleMania was always for Brock and Roman to main event night two, but they were going to do it for the Universal Championship. Just a few weeks later, Brock Lesnar ended up losing the title to Bobby Lashley because of Reigns' interference, and since he didn't have a title, Brock entered the Royal Rumble and he won. This very well could have been Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble because at this point, he wouldn't have had the Universal Championship and he wouldn't really be chasing the WWE Championship either. We also wouldn't have had that match to start the Rumble between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, which personally, I think is just good storytelling. So at this point, it's important to remember that the titles were still split. Lesnar was without a championship and could have just gone on to face Roman for one title, but then the WWE handcuffed themselves some more. Since the extra WWE title was added into the equation, they diverted back and had Brock win the title inside the Elimination Chamber just a few weeks later, and they made this a winner-take-all championship match, thinking that it would just make more sense to have both championships on the line. When that WWE championship wasn't even going to be involved. It was going to be Seth Rollins holding the title and probably facing someone from Monday Night Raw, the same Monday Night Raw whose top champion was previously Big E. And what happened to Big E, had Brock not been in this match, could have completely been avoided. After losing the WWE title, Big E wasn't given a rematch, and he was instead moved to SmackDown to again team with the New Day. On the March 11th episode of SmackDown, Big E and Xavier Woods took on Ridge Holland and Sheamus in a tag team match, where Big E in a scary, scary landing was dropped on his head by Ridge Holland following a belly-to-belly -belly suplex gone very, very wrong. This caused him to break two bones in his neck and he later revealed that in his first doctor's appointment, they told him that he avoided being paralyzed, he avoided a possible stroke and even death. That's how bad this injury could have been. An injury so unfortunate that at the time of this recording, Big E still hasn't returned to the WWE and it's been almost two years since it happened. Logic would suggest that had Seth won the title like the report suggested, hell, even one of the other two in the match, that Big E would never go to SmackDown in the first place, that the chase would have continued for him. He would have been in the hunt for the WWE Championship, or at the very, very least, still on Monday Night Raw, and this incident would have never happened. 
the WWE Champion heading to Mania would have been Rollins, who had his road to WrestleMania completely turned upside down. Now, should Brock have won the Universal title and Roman and Brock be the match at Mania, the Royal Rumble winner probably would have been different too, and that person would have gone on to challenge Seth Rollins. The Universal Championship had enough and it didn't need the Rumble, so Seth's path would have been pretty straightforward going into Mania. He's the defending WWE Champion, but instead they ran a storyline where he just couldn't make it onto Mania. Every week he was screwed out of that opportunity and couldn't find a way onto the show. Eventually it was revealed that Seth Rollins would wrestle Vince McMahon's hand-picked opponent at the show, and we all remember the rumors of Cody Rhodes at the time, that he and Tony Khan had a contract dispute. Well, when we got to Mania, it was Seth Rollins taking on a returning Cody Rhodes. The butterfly effect continued to take shape in a weird way, giving Cody the perfect opponent to make his return against. And if Seth is WWE champion at this point, then Cody's return is probably against someone else. Is it against AJ Styles? Is it against Edge? Who knows who this opponent is, and who knows if they even run this storyline. Imagine if that moment is taken away or the subsequent match isn't to that same level. Things are not the same. We gotta give props to Rollins too in this scenario because he did a great job with the storyline that was presented. Had it been someone else, would it have worked, would it not have worked, who knows. Also, this was the first of a trilogy. Remember that iconic night in Chicago where Cody Rhodes marched into Hell in a Cell with a torn pectoral? Yeah, well, if Rollins isn't there, if he's still holding the WWE Championship, that's probably not happening. So there's a possibility that some of the craziest moments that made 2022 so surreal are gone. But we gotta keep going with this thing. We continue on with WrestleMania where on night 2 Roman Reigns became a double champion. On a night that was supposed to just be for one title and wouldn't have had him at 500 days up until that point, he became a double champion and now both titles were on Roman, which let's be honest, ended up screwing over Monday Night Raw which was left without a full time champion. If you remember what happened next, things get a bit crazier. Cody Rhodes opened up the Raw after Mania and his mission statement was very simple win the WWE Championship. Underline WWE Championship, not the Universal Championship. Alternatively, if someone from the Raw brand is the WWE Champion, that rise, that path may have been completed sooner rather than later. Also, is Cody realistically there at that same point in time prepping for his Hell in a Cell match, injuring his pec? Losing Cody for the rest of the year could have completely been avoided. That's why it's a butterfly effect. One simple occurrence can cause a huge ripple down. What also would have changed was the main event for SummerSlam 2022. It was reported that headed into the event, the main event was supposed to be Randy Orton and Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal title. Randy Orton ended up getting injured at the hands of the bloodline. If again, things are different, does that injury end up happening and we lose Randy for 18 months? If Randy stays around, do we get a rivalry between RK Bro? Is the spotlight of Randy and Riddle being together enough to make Riddle not get released from the company? not get in trouble, who knows. So it would have been Randy and Roman as the main event of SummerSlam 2022. What would Brock have done in this case? Would we have the crazy tractor spot? Also, what could have been different is Austin Theory at this point might have already had a WWE Championship reign. In the summer of 2022, Vince continued to give Theory a mega push having him win the Money in the Bank contract, but he later went on to just cash in on the United States Championship, and if Raw had a full-time world champion, maybe the higher-ups take a chance and let Theory become champion for a little while and continue to show why he's the future, but again, that didn't happen. If Raw still had a champion, that would have been a complete possibility, tracing right back to day one in that main event. What ended up happening because both the titles were on one guy is as the days went on, WWE started to become more and more reluctant to pull the trigger and the result of having one guy as the champion is the numbers started to inflate. So a title reign that was supposed to top out at around 500 days stretched longer and longer and longer. With that, the bloodline story simply exploded. That was the biggest beneficiary of Roman not losing at day one. Then WWE doesn't place Sami Zayn in that role of being comedic relief. 
Sami Zayn then doesn't blossom into the superstar that he's become. You don't have the tribal court segment. You don't get the Usi segment. The crazy turn at the Rumble, gone. The chamber in Montreal, wave it goodbye. Because Roman kept the titles and the number grew larger and larger, the mystique grew. So anything that's connected to Roman probably isn't the same. One of those matches is against Drew McIntyre at Clash at the Castle. Drew is still yet to win a world championship in front of a live crowd and when WWE were in Cardiff, it felt like the perfect opportunity, but it didn't end up happening. Maybe in an alternate universe, Drew McIntyre does win in Cardiff. If there's a scenario where Roman lost the title, gained it back at Mania, the days would be a lot shorter so WWE wouldn't feel obligated to keep it on Roman. Heck, even if it's not Roman, maybe it's Drew versus Seth, maybe it's a triple threat, maybe it's a fatal four-way where Drew does end up capturing a world title and it's a huge feel-good moment. Point is, it could have been a lot different and the landscape would have changed a ton. Clash the Castle was also the night where Solo Sokoa debuted. Does that debut happen to protect Reigns if the Bloodline story isn't blossoming the way that it did? What's so weird is the show is called Day One, the Bloodline puts up the ones and this was the show that in a strange, twisted, weird way benefited them the most and helped continue a story that so many people coin as the best story of all time. That Bloodline story and Sami Zayn's involvement created a weird dilemma which could have been completely avoided and we could have had two different main events for WrestleMania 39, each with a different outcome. Earlier in the video I mentioned how if the WWE Championship was still on Raw, maybe Cody is going after that. Instead, you got this dilemma where Cody won the Royal Rumble while Sami was so hot. There could have been a scenario where Cody still won the Rumble and challenged for the WWE title, poetically winning it a year after he returned. Meanwhile, Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns wrestled at Mania, crowning Sami Zayn champion, which could have segued perfectly into the breakup of the bloodline even further, and Jay vs Roman would have happened without a championship, and it would have just been for the title of Tribal Chief. If after that they don't want to keep running the bloodline story, then realistically that could have been the perfect culmination. It started with Jay and Roman, and it ended with Jay and Roman. WrestleMania 39 had Cody vs Roman in the main event with Roman Reigns retaining the championship. Again, the WWE were handcuffed because at this point, Roman Reigns was so, so close to history. He was at 945 days, not that far from 1000, and we all know the WWE, they love those huge headlines. Also, the night one main event, a match which I know a lot of you love doesn't happen. You don't get that bromance between Jay and Sammy. You don't get the reunion with KO and Sammy. There's so many different things that could fit into this, but one of the weirdest yet almost satisfying occurrences is the return of the World Heavyweight Championship. A championship that again, wouldn't have been around if we still had two titles. The weirdly satisfying part is Seth Rollins became the first ever World Heavyweight Champion. The same dude who was gonna win the WWE title in the first place. It's just been so, so glitched. A lot of fans have been enjoying the WWE lately, and there's a lot of good that came out of this butterfly effect, but it's crazy to think how much different things could have been if that one match just happened. You could actually say that it's the biggest what if in WWE history. The WWE we have right now, almost in a strange way, was never meant to happen. Big E probably isn't injured. Seth Rollins isn't there to slot in as Cody's opponent. The rise of Jey Uso is completely different. The SummerSlam main event never happens. Roman might be a babyface. The World Heavyweight Championship and Women's World Championship are not a thing. And there's so many what ifs and then if this happens and if this happens connected to this that you could spend days diving into the scenarios but it stemmed from one simple occurrence that changed the timeline of the company. After day one, 2022, nothing was ever the same.